Configuring BGP Prefix Filtering By the time you're done here, you will be able to implement route filtering to the carrier using prefix lists. And I hope by this point you've seen a few of the BGP real world nuggets, especially establishing the base configuration. Because I kind of unpacked some information, gave you some show commands that showed the situation that we're in. We're now in step two, installing a route filter. We've got the BGP session established to our neighbor, and we're determining what routes to actually send those neighbors, which in our case is that 63232.144.0, so that it can be redundant on the internet. This is where I add a little bit more information about what we're doing here. I showed you in the last nugget that we have these public edge devices, Brocade 1 and Brocade 2, and I was showing you that they're sort of redundant. Each one has a connection to a different carrier. In this case, I'm looking at the secondary router, which has a connection to Cogent, Autonomous System 174. That's established, and it's advertising routes. But I also showed you that I kind of messed up. If I look at my BGP table, I've got all these little subnets sitting in the BGP routing table. Now I'm doing filtering, it's in place, and I'm gonna show you how I do that, but you might wonder, what's going on here? What's up with all these little subnets all over the place? Well, let me unpack our data center a little bit more for you. The only thing that you'll be seeing in this series is this, because it's the only part that has to do with BGP. This and this are the Brocade Public Edge routers. Those are the devices that are advertising that slash 24 subnet out to Cogent and out to level three. But inside of our network, we then take that one big subnet and use static routes to break it up into a bunch of smaller subnets. Because behind the public edge, I have a bunch of other routers. Most of them belong to VIA, my organization, but we actually do some co-hosting, meaning we allow other organizations to install routers in racks that we manage at the data center Holy smokes, this is so cool, right? And we give them public IP addresses based on how much they pay us. So in a way, we're a type of carrier. We're a sub-carrier, maybe a sub-sub-carrier. Either way, that's what we're doing. So these guys have the slash 24, and I might create a static route here and here to say for some little subnet of that slash 24, send it over here to, let's just say, Billy Bob's network and the Billy Bob organization will come install a router or routers, plural, into our rack and pay us to do so, and set up NAT mappings on their router to reach to their servers that they're hosting to the rest of the world. We have one organization that is so small they don't even have a router. We put in a static route with a slash 32 mask, we gave them one public IP address that goes straight to a server that they're running and hosting some stuff off of. That's why when you look at the BGP table and I say I messed up, I've got all these little subnets in there. See all these guys? These are all little slash 32 subnets. We're sending this IP address over here, this IP address over there. Let me show you what I did wrong. Under the BGP process, which is running on both of the routers, this one that connects over here to level three, this one over here that connects over here to Cogen. Hopefully you can see that. I, I know some people watch this on an iPhone. It might be hard to see. It's faded in the background. Imagine two routers in a cloudy place. So on both of those routers, I went in and typed under the router BGP process, redistribute static. That's where I messed up. I did redistribution with no filter. So all the static routes that I had on that router, the ones that I showed you that went to all of our little customer routers and broke up that slash 24 subnet, ended up going, shoop, they're right in the BGP table. Now my mistake stopped there. I've got a bunch of routes in the BGP table that I don't really want there. But what I did was applied a prefix filter as I'm sending those advertisements out to the carrier routers so all those little subnets don't end up there. The way I did that is using a prefix list. By the way, prefix lists were designed just for BGP. You can accomplish similar things with an access list. It just takes a lot more work. The difference between a prefix list and an access list is prefix list really focuses in on matching specific subnet masks. So look at this first line. I typed in IP prefix list, BGP filter, sequence number five, that's just the order of events. I wanna permit 63232.144.0 slash 24. Exactly slash 24. Don't permit a slash 27, don't permit a slash 29. This isn't like a wildcard mask. If you've played with access control list before, you would do the same thing by typing in 63.232.144.0 with a wildcard mask of 000.255. The problem with using an access list to do that is it says, I'll match 63, 232, 144, and then I don't care what comes there. 
using an access list to try and filter it would mean all the little subnets get through because they're all a subnet and they all match this ACL. Whereas with a prefix list, it only allows that slash 24. And by the way, I'm not going to show you here, but you can get a lot more detailed by saying less than or greater than certain subnets here to kind of say, well, I'll, I'll permit some subnets, not all the subnets. You can get pretty crazy with it, right? Then underneath that, I said, I also want to deny 0 to 0 to 0 to 0. It's kind of like my deny all. So yes, I messed up right here by redistributing all my static routes into the BGP table, and I'm going to fix that by typing in neighbor such and such prefix list BGP filter out, which applies my prefix list right here to all the outbound advertisements I'm sending to those neighbors, which allows only this one through. That is why even though I have all of these routes sitting in my BGP routing table, if I type in show IP BGP neighbor, and zone in on specifically this neighbor, which happens to be cogent, and type in advertise routes, meaning the routes that I am advertising to that neighbor, what I see is only this guy. So now, how do I fix this? How do I fix my mistake? Well, watch this. I'm gonna go into global config mode, and I'm on the secondary router right now. And I'm gonna type in router BGP. What I did was just do a redistribute static, which sent all the static routes into the BGP process and then required me to filter them out as I sent them to the carrier. Watch what happens when I hit the question mark. It allows me to use a route map to filter what routes go in there. So the way that I can clean up my BGP table is to create a route map that matches just the 63.232 route and then attach that route map to my redistribution statement. And this should clean right up. So let's do that right now. Now, <laughs> I am on a production router. So everything I'm gonna type, I'm gonna type in here. You're gonna see it work, but I'm not gonna actually do anything as in clear the BGP session and tear it down until I'm in a maintenance window in the evening. I'm crazy, but not that crazy. I'll exit out of here. I'm gonna type in the command show IP prefix list just to show you the prefix list that I have. Just like the config showed right back here, I have the prefix list BGP filter. You see that right here with the two entries that I mentioned. Sequence five, match that guy. Sequence 10, deny everything else. But I also created a prefix list that I named 63.232.144.0. I named the prefix list after the subnet that it matches. I'm logical like that. And I just matched that one subnet. So let's do this. I'm gonna go into global config mode and type in route map, and I'll name it filter-statics. And I could put permit or deny. I'll put permit 10. Just start with sequence number 10 on this route map. Hit the question mark, and I'm gonna say, I wanna match the IP address, question mark, identified in the prefix list, question mark, and the prefix list name is exactly this guy right here. Enter. That's it. That's the only statement that will be in this route map. I'll exit out of there. Router BGP, redistribute static, and attach it to the route map, filter statics. Enter. Now, as I'm doing that redistribution, it's only going to match this. Then when I type in show IP BGP, the Oh, it took effect right then. Some routers, you have to clear the BGP session. Apparently on Brocade, you don't. And I'm taking just a moment right now to pause and reflect of the insanity that I just did. It worked, but you shouldn't do that on a production router in the middle of the day. The beauty of video training is you don't see me pausing and breathing in a paper bag that's sitting right next to me. I'm gonna hit the up arrow and... Actually, it wasn't in the history. I'll just go and type this command again. I want to make sure I'm still advertising the right routes to that neighbor. I am. Life is good. I've cleaned up the BGP table back down to two routes by attaching it to my redistribute static command a little sooner than I thought I would. Save that configuration. Now that I've got it, let's jump over to the CenturyLink router and do the same thing. I'll just copy and paste those same commands. Actually, before I do, let's just do a show IP BGP to show the current BGP table littered with statics. Go into global, paste in, route map filter statics permit 10, paste in, match IP address prefix list this, and just because I'm crazy, I wanna make sure that I have that prefix list on this router as well, I do, good. Go into router BGP and paste in that redistribute static but filtered with the route map filter statics. Hit enter, come back, show IP BGP, and we've gone from a bunch of littered routes, an ugly messy thing, down to just the two routes that I want to be in the BGP table. The default route coming from CenturyLink and the route that I'm advertising out to them. Save, lock and load, good. 
You probably saw a little different side of the Jeremy than you're used to in some of the CBT Nuggets certification series. There's no nervousness at all when you're doing this in a lab environment, blowing up routers and saying, whoops, let's fix that, versus doing it in an environment that could affect thousands of people. You have now seen the implementation of route filtering to the carrier using prefix lists and, as a bonus, route filtering into the BGP process using a route map to clean up and only have the things in the BGP table that you want to be in.